Bicycles are designed for the front and rear wheel to be centered to the mid plane of the bike. If the wheels are not centered or out of dish, the bicycle can handle poorly. Hello, Calvin Jones with the Park Tool Company. In this video, we're gonna review how to check wheel centering and also how to adjust centering using spoke tension. For other aspects of wheel chewing, such as lateral wheel chewing, see our video playlist. The wheel and rim of the bicycle should be centered to the middle of the frame or fork which also places the rim over the middle of the hub. For bikes using open dropouts, the rim is centered between the hub lock nut faces, which are the contact points for the frame or fork. For two axle wheels, the face of these hub caps are the contact points for centering the rim. On front wheels without a rotor disc, such as bikes with rim brakes, both the left and right hub flanges are set equal distance to the middle of the hub. The rim will be centered to the hub contact points as well as being centered between the left and right hub flanges. On this rear hub with sprockets, the rim is also centered to the middle of the hub, halfway between the frame contact points. However, the left and right flanges are not equally distanced from the hub center. The drive side hub flange is offset toward the inside to allow room for the sprockets. Although the rim is centered to the two contact points, it will not be centered to the middle of the two flanges. Here are some recommended tools when working on centering. A dishing tool such as the Park Tool WAG4 or WAG5. A spoke wrench that is compatible with your spoke nipples. Properly sized spoke wrenches are very important. See this article at parktool.com for more information. Tire levers if you need to remove the tire. And a wheel chewing stand can be very helpful, such as the Park Tool TS2.2 or TS4.2. The most accurate method of checking wheel centering is with a dishing tool. If you don't have one, here's a visual test that will give you an idea of the centering. Sight how the wheel is sitting in the frame or fork. Does it appear off to one side? This front wheel appears to be well centered to the fork. However, this bike's rear wheel doesn't appear to be well centered. It looks like it is off toward the left side. If it looks off-center, double-check that the wheel was mounted correctly in the frame or fork. To be corrected, this rim needs to move to the right, a process described later in this video. Using a dishing tool, such as the WAG4 or WAG5 from Park Tool, is the most accurate method for checking wheels for centering. Before using a dishing tool, begin by checking the lateral truing straightness of the wheel. If the wheel is badly out of true, the dishing tool will not be as accurate. Correct lateral truing errors before using a dishing tool. For lateral air correction, see the wheel truing playlist here. To use the dishing tool, it is easiest to remove the wheel from the bike. For consistent work habits, lay the wheel flat on a bench with the right side or drive side facing up. If you are using the WAG5 or similar tool, be sure the legs of the tool contact the rim and not the tire. If necessary, deflate the tire and fold it back so the tool legs are on the rim. For two axle wheels, the WH1 makes a nice wheel holder. The WAG4 has sliding feet, allowing rim contact even with the tire still in place and inflated. With the feet of the tool on the rim, lower the sliding indicator until the end rests on part of the hub that contacts the inside face of the fork or frame dropout. On through axle wheels, that is the face of the end cap. These three points of contact represent the centering of the rim relative to the right side of the hub. Snug the slider knob and lift the tool. Flip the wheel over and compare this right side template to the same points on the left side. There are three possible scenarios you might encounter. The first scenario is you see no significant gap at the hub. Both left and right rim measurements match relative to the hub. This means the rim is well centered to the hub and the wheel needs no centering correction. 
Now let's look at a second scenario. This wheel uses a quick release skewer and is from an open dropout fork. The skewer can stay in place when using the park tool dishing tools. Starting on the right, set both feet so they contact the rim. Next, lower the indicator to the hub lock nut face. Flip the wheel to the left side and compare the reference set from the right side. With this wheel, we have a fairly large gap seen at the hub. This wheel is clearly not as nicely centered as the through axle wheel in scenario one. However, a wheel need not be perfectly centered to be fully usable. The center of this wheel will be offset to the mid plane of the bike by only half of the gap seen here. Generally, if the air gap seen at the hub is about one millimeter or less, the wheel is only off center by less than a half a millimeter when in the bike. And that should be considered adequately centered for any use. The scrap piece of gear cable is 1.2 millimeters, which is pretty close to one millimeter. It makes a simple and available go, no go gauge. If the cable fits in the gap easily, like here, the wheel needs correction. Here is another measuring test if the wheel uses threaded axles. A threaded axle is commonly a one millimeter pitch. We can see about three threads here between the indicator and the lock nut face. So we have about a three millimeter air. This rear wheel will demonstrate the third possible scenario. After setting the tool on the right side of the wheel, flip the wheel to compare the three contact points to the other side. Here, when the tool is arranged so both feet are placed on the rim, the indicator sits below the lock nut face. Again, if the difference between the indicator and face is within one millimeter, it should be considered within tolerance. This example looks like it might be close to a millimeter. To get a gap you can measure more easily, reset the dishing tool using this left side as the beginning reference side. With this double flip of the wheel back to the right side, you will find a gap between the indicator and the axle end face. Our scrap piece of cable indicates this wheel needs correction. If a wheel needs a centering correction, it's important to understand how the rim moves relative to the hub. When there is a gap between the hub lock nut face and the tool indicator, the rim needs to move toward the side opposite the tool. This rim needs to move to the right, the non-rotor side, which will effectively move the hub left. That will reduce the gap between the indicator and the hub. This is an easy place to get confused and move the rim the wrong way. But here's a test to help visualize what's going to happen when you tighten one side. Let's simulate what tightening spokes on one side would do. Squeezing a pair of right side spokes near the dishing tool foot moves the rim, much like tightening all right side spokes. We can see the gap getting smaller. That tells us tightening the right is the way this rim needs to go. To move the rim relative to the hub, we use changes in spoke tension from one flange. The spokes in the rim are coming from the left and right flanges. Each side is pulling the rim toward their own flange. Tightening only spokes from the right flange move the rim to the right. Tightening only the left side spokes moves the rim toward the left. However, because the rim has tension from both left and right side spokes, we can also loosen to make corrections to centering. Loosening only the left side spokes also moves the rim to the right because the right side tension will pull it over. Loosening only right side spokes will move the rim to the left. Keep in mind that tightening one side raises the overall wheel tension, even of the side you're not tightening. For example, tightening the right side moves the rim to the right, but it also raises the overall spoke tension, even of the left side spokes. This is one it's a good idea to get a sense of where the wheel's at for tension. With enough experience, you can squeeze and get a, get a sense of this, but this is why we'd recommend a tensiometer like the TM1. Here, check a few spokes. This wheel we're looking at, it's pretty low tension. Tightening the right side of this wheel to fix the dish would be a good choice. It will fix the centering air and raise the overall tension. On wheels where the flanges of the hub are different to the center of the hub, such as rear wheel with sprockets, or on front wheels with a rotor disc, you're going to see differences of left and right side spoke tension. The side that is inset or further in is going to have higher tension. You can measure it and even feel it on these wheels 
This side, for example, feels tight, but squeezing the non-drive side feels looser. That's simply the engineering of these wheels and is a normal thing. And this is why we pay attention to the tightness of the inset side, the tighter side. The other side will simply be lower when the dish or the centering is properly set. When available, install the wheel into a truing stand with the right side on your right as you face the stand. This helps you orient yourself to the wheel so you can remember which way the rim needs to move. Adjust the caliper indicators out of the way. The dishing tool has already provided the most accurate information on which way to move the rim. This particular wheel has an air seen at the left side of the hub. The rim needs to move to the right. Use the tire valve hole as an easy, recognizable starting and stopping point. Select a spoke from the right flange that is adjacent to the valve. When just learning to make dish corrections, it is best to work in small increments. Install the spoke wrench fully on the nipple and take note of the wrench orientation. Turn the wrench one quarter, which is turning the wrench 90 degrees. Seen from looking over the nipple, this is the way you will tighten. After turning this first right side spoke nipple one quarter turn, advance to the next same side spoke and again tighten one quarter. Continue this way all the way around the rim, tightening only right side spokes until you were back to the starting point at the valve hole. It is common for the wheel to develop some minor lateral chewing issues from this change in tension. Spin the wheel and correct any lateral air. Because the rim is moved relative to the hub, you need to reset the dishing tool starting again from the right side. We want to see an improvement and a reduction in the air gap. If the air is still too large, it may take several attempts to get the rim centered. This gap is smaller, so it's getting better. Repeat the correction, again using one quarter turn. Check the dish reference from both sides and repeat as necessary until the wheel shows one millimeter or less gap at the hub. In this rear wheel, we found that the rim needs to move toward the non-drive side. On a rear wheel, a concern for maximum tension is the flatter side, the drive side that's inset more. A check of this side shows this wheel is actually very tight tension. Although we could fix the centering by tightening the left, it's going to rocket the tension beyond where we want. So in this case, we would loosen the right side, help back down the tension, and correct the dish. Loosen the right, check the lateral, check the dish until it's in tolerance. Begin at the valve hole and loosen each drive side spoke one quarter turn. Check the lateral true and check the dish. On a wheel like this one that has good overall tension but bad dish air, it makes sense to make corrections to both sides. However, don't do your tightening and loosening in one pass. First, loosen the side that needs loosening, correct lateral air. Next, tighten the side that needs tightening. Again, check lateral air. Finish by checking the dish and see if it gets within tolerance. And that's how we check wheel centering and how we correct wheel centering to get the rims in the middle of the bike, the frame and the fork for the best handling possible. For more on wheel truing, the other aspects are covered in our wheel truing playlist. Thanks for watching.